So I actually wanted to dive uh, a little bit uh, into a smaller scale problem, which is doing urban design and planning, and in this case with City Engine. But rather than take you through kind of just a, a set of feature functions, I want to give it some context and, and actually present it in the context of a project. So this is Uppsala, Sweden. We're going to go back to Sweden. And the city is experiencing a lot of demand for housing and a need to create large new developed areas. What they've decided to do is build kind of a spoken hub model along their transit, transit system, their tram system. So this is Gutsunda to the southwest of the main city. And they're trying to create this integrated, socially inclusive development in Uppsala that will be connected to the downtown through the tram system. It's going to add, in that area, 3,500 to 7,000 new dwelling units and all the associated services, workplaces, uh, ed educational uh, ins installations, retail, right, to give it kind of a rich urban life and, and create the public spaces to tie that together into a sense of community. So let's actually take a look at it. I'm going to start in ArcGIS Urban. So Uppsala is using ArcGIS Urban to do their planning. Um, this is the city, this is the, the 3D base map and the, and the zoning. And if we click, we can see that one of the projects that they've been working on is this Gutsunda area uh, to the southwest. Gutsunda, with, within the area, has two transit stations. One of those is an area they call Gutsunda Torg. It's focused around... Oh. Hold on. Okay, let me zoom out again. So this is Uppsala in ArcGIS Urban as a 3D model. And there's this area to the southwest called Gutsunda, which they're doing their planning on. And within Gutsunda is Gutsunda Torg, this development around one of the tra uh, transit stations. It has a historic mall, um, which they want to redevelop and actually add more exits to and focus all the businesses out to exterior facades and then redevelop all the parcels around it, adding greater density, narrower streets, uh, to create a more pedestrian-friendly environment. So they worked in City Engine to create uh, some representations of, of what these uh, blocks and these redevelopments could look like. But what if we wanted to work on these in greater detail? So I'm going to flip over to City Engine here. City Engine has the ability to open a project directly from ArcGIS Urban. I'm logged into ArcGIS Online. I have this new little tab here called ArcGIS Urban. I can right click and import this ArcGIS Urban plan directly in the City Engine and view it. City Engine has the rules that we have in ArcGIS Urban as part of the Esri library. So I can apply those rules to create the same representations that I have in ArcGIS Urban not just the uh, plausible building forms, but also representations of zoning volumes, et cetera. So now what I want to do is I want to go in and add more detail to this plan. I want to modify the parcels that underlay it. So I've created a new scenario, and I want to modify this scenario. The first thing we've done is, let's say, for instance, I don't like the, the parcelization of this existing block to the south. We've created a whole new set of tools for managing shapes and modifying shapes through things like set operators, automatic hole filling, that allow me to quickly combine or separate shapes to rapidly create blocks and parcels. So I've turned this back into a block. And what I actually want to do is subdivide it based on the layout of the adjacent, adjacent parcels. So I'm going to drop a guideline from these two adjacent sets of blocks and then use that guideline as my guide for creating a new split in this shape. So I'll separate it into two shapes. The other thing that we've done is we've built in, um, we've built a new set of rules called the site development rules that I can use to create features. So I can apply a rule, so I'm going to make this large space here into a, into a green space, and I'm going to make this adjacent space into a, a set of uh, a building associated with that. So again, using the same, same sort of rule set that I have in ArcGIS Urban to create buildings inside City Engine. 
Now, these rules also have some additional capabilities. So for instance, I can apply the rule to this building footprint here, and I can turn on interactive handles. Handles allow me to edit and modify buildings without having to go into the rule parameters and, and change individual numbers. So it creates a more interactive uh, way of working with rules across my scene. So I'm going to actually generate a whole set of buildings for this block area. I can also apply rules to building masses. So what I have here is, again, a set of, a set of uh, parcels that I've created. Rather than apply a rule that automatically pops up the building height, I actually want to manipulate individual buildings and change their forms in sort of a more custom way. So for instance, I can add this building up. I can go in and sketch. I can cut that building in half right, and make an angled building, or I could make a curved building. So this gives me a lot more flexibility in the style and shape of my buildings. But you'll notice that even though I'm using a, a totally different geometry here, right, I'm still getting the same kind of results as I would get from applying these rules uh, to a parcel. The other thing is if I look at the results of the rule, right, I'm actually getting a report on the total gross floor area and the key performance indicators, the number of households, the number of jobs, the amount of population I'm adding. And that actually all dynamically responds to my edits to these features and recalculates every time I make a change. So I can actually track the impact that I'm having, uh, the changes I'm making, the impact that it's having on the urban environment. It's not just uh, numeric impacts, so I'm gonna zoom out a little. I'm gonna add a person in this park. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that whatever buildings I build in this park are not going to block this person's, or that, sorry, whatever buildings I build is not going to block the view of a person on the top floor of this adjacent building to this park space that I've built in the center of these two rows. So this is a, a view shot analysis, but of course it's dynamic. So if I increase the height of that building, right, you can see I'm actually interactively cutting off that view. And that's a visual analysis that I'm doing that I can use to guide my design. But also here on the right, you can see I'm taking measurements. How much I'm impacting the percentage of what's viewable, how much I'm impacting. So for instance, if I made this very tall and started cutting away the, the amount of the sky that I could see, I would reduce the amount of the sky, the panorama that was visible to me as I worked. Okay, what if I have a block and I don't feel like sitting there and manually cutting that into parcels uh, myself? City Engine has within its streets this long had this ability to generate a block that's contained by streets and subdivide it into a set of parcels. We've added that ability now into shapes. So you can push your own blocks in and pick a subdivision style. Let's say I'm going to do an offset subdivision at 1,000 meters, apply that, and it's automatically cut my block into multiple parcels. And then it's just a matter of dragging rules on it to create representations of buildings. In addition to have a rule that works on footprints and a rule that works on masses, we also have a rule that works on parcels, which has the same sort of step backs that you have in ArcGIS Urban so you can constrain the form of the building. What if that is still one step too hard? What if rather than splitting all my geometries into parcels, I want to work with whole block typologies? Well, we've been working with the city to develop this rule that generates block typologies. And it's a multi-step rule. So if I turn it on, you can see I get these handles these handles allow me to modify the procedurally generated shape of the building footprints that form the base of this block. I can then go to the next step and modify the buildings that are being procedurally generated. And again, change their height interactively by grabbing a handle, right, to make them, make them significantly taller. 
I can pick a different usage type associated with the building. So I could turn this into a government building um, style, all just by simply changing uh, uh, handles on the screen. Once I've got my design looking uh, the way I wanted to in terms of the masses, what I want to do is I actually want to create a realistic representation. And so there's another mode here called detailed buildings, which actually skins this building with these, these more detailed facades. I can do that to both these blocks here, side by side. And you'll notice that it automatically places a, a green space in the courtyard, and I could constrain that and modify it however I want. Each of these rules has a similar capability to generate detailed buildings. They all run off the same set of parameters, so they all look the same. So I can actually change, I could select buildings across multiple rules and change their look and feel, even though they're actually being derived from separate geometries. So let me rotate around, okay. to create my, my 3D design. Once I have my design, then I can share it. So there's a couple things I can do. I can, of course, select all these models, export the models out, take them back into GIS as a set of 3D models. I could export them to Unreal, and in Unreal, create much more compelling visual representations. When I closed my presentation, it disappeared. My apologies. Okay, so this is Unreal. We have a direct export to Unreal's Datasmith. So it allows you to take what you've created in City Engine export it to a Datasmith file, and import that into Unreal. In Unreal, you can create the more compelling visuals with enhanced lighting effects, multiple lighting sources, shadows, uh, materials, uh, etc. But the more exciting thing, I think, for, for us is the VR experiences. And what we've done is we've created a VR experience specifically for City Engine that honors scenarios, and those scenarios come from ArcGIS Urban, and you can flip between them and view your design alternatives in virtual reality, and even drop yourself down to that first-person view to experience what a proposed design looks like. Or you can export the 3D models that you've built back to ArcGIS Urban, apply thematic mapping, or apply different types of display styles such as a sketching display style, if you're worried that uh, people who look at it will perceive it as, as too, too perfect or too set a design, to share the representation that you've built in City Engine on the web as part of ArcGIS Urban. So just to recap, uh, integration with ArcGIS Urban, City Engine can read plans and publish plans and modify plans from ArcGIS Urban. And I guess that's one thing I want to, I didn't highlight enough when I pulled that down. That link to ArcGIS Urban is not static, it's live. So when you modify those parcels, you can synchronize those changes back to Arc, ArcGIS Urban live as a service. That's an advantage because you can use City Engine as an editing tool and you just have to be aware of it, because if you delete all your parcels in City Engine, you can potentially delete all your parcels in ArcGIS Urban. Esri has a rule library. That rule library includes the rules from ArcGIS Urban. That library can update more frequently than City Engine, so as we release Urban, you'll see that library change over time. We've added a whole bunch of new shape editing tools for modifying blocks, lots, parcels, cutting and dividing them up including new interactive design tools, curve editing tools, 
that you can use to, to create change. We've brought the lot subdivision technology that was in city engine only into the procedural runtime and exposed it for shapes. So that allows you to subdivide shapes and mass and will also allow you to do subdivision of shapes uh, inside of a rule itself. We've added a set of new CGA parameters to support urban design and planning. And those are being used in ArcGIS Urban as well to create representations. And then supporting export to Unreal Studio and also to Unity through FBX for use in high-end architectural visualization, virtual reality, augmented reality, or game development. And the very last thing is the site design rules that we've built to work with data from ArcGIS Urban that generate the same kind of key performance metrics as ArcGIS Urban that are freely available online that you can download and use to create compelling 3D forms. So City Engine is really evolving from this 2D to 3D content creation tool into this urban design planning tool focused on conceptual planning, master planning, and site planning with the ability to take those and share them out through unique experiences like VR and AR. Thank you.